in Hot is presented by Botano. The game starts now. Here are your hosts, Brent Wallace, Jason York, and Bobby Ryan. Hey, happy Monday, everybody. Uh, Brent Wallace alongside Jason York and Bobby Ryan. Boys, before we begin, perhaps a moment of silence for the Ottawa Senators season, shall we? Right out of right off right out of the bat. Okay. <laughs> Happy Got Monday. The punch right, right away, hey, Wally. Hey, you seven thirty. You, 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 okay. You picked Ottawa for sure. You picked. Sorry, no. You went against Ottawa. You went with Calgary. Yeah. You're back on this. You're yeah, back I, on hating the Sens. No, I just knew they <laughs> listen. They traveled from Vancouver, which was an hour time change. Plus, they changed the clocks an hour. That's a two. They got yeah, in at yeah. four a.m. Calgary had lost five straight at home. It was just, it was bound. They were going to turn it around. I made, I made the yeah, mistake think, of yeah. calling in, a calling in a friend. I phoned my buddy, Ryan Leslie there. I'm like, what's going on with Calgary? Are they, are they really this bad? He's like, Oh, don't take them. Don't take them. I'm like, that's what I get for <laughs> reaching out and asking stick with your gut. <laughs> yeah. I just thought there was going to be too much of a response after getting a, you know, getting, kicked in the teeth there in Vancouver. I was like, they're going to have a rebound. And I didn't take in any of those accounts. So um, joke's on me. Yeah. That was a tough one. <laughs> that was a tough one. Listen, Calgary's still a talented team. And I mean, all the uh, respect to Kevin Mandelize, but he's playing in a couple of games here. He's 22 years old. They, on the road, it's just, it's a recipe for disaster. And that's what we saw. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. That was it's two in a row. I mean, it's a, it's a disaster. It's it's exactly what you don't want um, on this road trip. We said we we said they had to play 500 hockey, um, and they and not only are they not doing that, they're not. They're, I mean, they're getting run out of buildings right now. So it's it's it was yeah. it's a tough weekend. You flush and you hope that you can go pick up what um, two points in Edmonton on the way home, and then you hope that you can you you got to get on a run now. You have no choice but to to get right back on a big run. Um, so it's a shame. It's a, it was a tough weekend. I didn't get to watch as much as I wanted to. I told you guys I got some birthday stuff going on, some people in town. Some, um, but we had the game on last night, and um, I thought they played okay for the you know for the first period that I watched. But outside of that, it was it was a little ugly. It wasn't a good night. Are we going to get into this right away, Wally? Right in? No. Well, wh why? Is there something you, you want to get off your chest first? <laughs> no, you, you usually, yeah, you know, it. you're... you're you're very anal. You like to do, you know, you, we get the sponsors in. We do all that stuff before we get into the talk. We're just getting after it well, right away here. Is that what we're doing? Is that what I'm we're a little here? fired up today. I'm a little, I'm a little disappointed. Yeah. You're cranky? And I, yeah. And I'm, so as Bobby said, uh, you flush it and move on. Well, how many times are you going to keep saying, well, you flush it and move on? You can't keep saying that because <laughs> then the season's over. And that's basically okay. where I think we're at. I, so if you listen to post game from a couple of the guys, and I'm going to read a couple of quotes to you because I thought – yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of times post game, there isn't much said, okay. right? Ah, oh, we. You right? you you say Jim's all this. You say all this stuff. You say all this stuff, and I'll tell you exactly why this is happening. This ends after we listen to this. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Here we go. Uh, Tim Stutzla. There's no excuse. I don't even know what to say. It's just we're not sharing pucks. We're not breaking the puck out and turning pucks over when we shouldn't. I wouldn't say trying too much. I would say we just didn't work hard enough. That's tough to hear, perhaps. Uh, when you're trying to fight for your playoff lives. And then Austin Watson, who I think is extremely articulate and understands the game really well. There's belief for sure in trying to claim a playoff spot. You know, we're quick to acknowledge that maturity in our game to have gotten desperate and to get ourselves to that point. I think we've, I think we've got to, you know, I think we've also got to check ourselves and realize that the last few games have been a little immature in a sense, just the way that we've got down and we haven't, really stuck to our plan. We've kind of tried to stretch the game out. We've kind of tried to get it all back in one swoop. And you know, that's the maturity that we've, and that's the maturity that we have been showing. So uh, it's bang on by Austin Watson, right? He just said that yeah. they had played extremely well. They were trying to fight for their lives. They were playing responsible hockey. And now they've shown that it looks like, you know what's happened? Everybody else moved their clocks forward and Ottawa got confused and moved them back to November. And that's exactly the way they played defensively. <laughs> oh, my God. Well I'm exhausted. Those were two late nights back to back. Um, but listen, this here. here's what. Why is anybody surprised right now? Like, what are people going to think? What did people think that this team 
was going to, who just won, I don't know, what were the second best record in the National Hockey League since January 25th, right? It was Carolina, yeah. then the Ottawa Senators. It's not, it's not possible, it's not possible for this team to, to continue on that stretch of hockey that they played for the remainder of the season. It's not. It wasn't going to happen. And anybody that was thinking it was, was going to doesn't know hockey. It, it's not going to happen. And I'll tell you why. Big game last night, and you look at Ottawa's roster, the way it's constructed, it's not constructed to win right now. It just isn't. And throw in the fact that Cam Talbot's hurt, you, you're, you're starting a goalie that's got three NHL, sorry, two, two NHL games. He already caught lightning in a bottle once. They were totally outplayed against the Islanders. The kid came in and stopped, what did he stop, 55 shots? That's asking a lot for Mandalizi to do this. So I, I just look at the roster. That was a must-win game for Calgary. We can all agree on that. Must win. Yeah. If Cal mm -hmm. their season, their season is hanging on the line. And you look at the guys on that team right now. Nazem Kadri. You think he's been through some shit in his career? He got traded out of Toronto, won a Stanley Cup in Colorado. Remember how miserable his first years of existence in the NHL were? Like he's been through stuff. Michael Backlund, like you watch him play, he's not getting rattled out there. The guy's been in the league forever. And you got a guy like Lindholm, already been traded. You, Tyler Toffoli, what's he got, Bob? Two Stanley Cups? Yeah. Two Stanley Cups? So wh yep. why do we think when we why do we think when we watch the game that Claude Giroux is the best player on the ice for the Ottawa Senators? Because the guy's played a thousand games because he's been a runner up for the MVP in the league. He's been he's been there, he's done that. So when when it when thi when 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 things get tight, when things get rattled, Claude Giroux ain't getting rattled. Why is Thomas Shabbat getting rattled right now? He's never been through this. Thomas Shabbat has never played a meaningful game in his life until this year. So is this just magically he's gonna figure it out? The, I'm sorry, but the NHL doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. To me, the Senators are exactly where I thought they would be. They played some great hockey, getting a little bit rattled right now. And this is, you learn from it, and hopefully you get better from it. So I, I'm not surprised, guys. And there's my rant. There's my morning rant, Raleigh. <laughs> I, uh, I, I like it. I'm not going to follow it up, but I will say, I, wait, wait, I mean, to your point, these guys, these young guys, the Bradys, the the Chabby's aren't, I mean, Chabby's not a young guy anymore, but Chabby, Brady, uh, Stutzla, um, it, the list goes on. They're all getting, they're all getting experienced by fire right now. And that's not a bad thing. Whether they win or lose games exactly. right now, it's not a bad thing for them going forward. This is, a, and we said this earlier, this is a, this year was going to be a steep learning curve for a lot of these players and they're in it right now. And they're in it with their backs against it because you got a goalie that hasn't played. You got a defense that's gotten better, but, um, everything for right now is just about setting up for next year, you know, but don't, you know, for them, don't get ahead of yourselves and count yourselves out, play the games, make the run, try to get there. But at the same time, everything is leading for next year, right? The, the team's going to, the way the team's constructed, everybody's back for the most part. All right. So I got exactly. one point. I got a question to come back to you on, on D, but the first back to you, Yorkie was like, why is everybody thinking things are going to be different? Now here's why, because as fans, we hope, we hope and pray and think that the team is heading in a, the right direction and that there's a chance. We just want to have a chance. And so everybody was buying into like, let's maybe this is a push that the kids can do this. That's why. That's why. Listen, we all thought perhaps in the back of our minds that, yes, this is a team that was going to be back at the bottom again here, not through distant future. But they gave us a chance. They gave us a, a window right of what it could possibly look like. And that's what we saw. So that's why everybody was excited. And I don't fault anybody this for is that. A... God damn it, this t this city's deserved this. <laughs> hey, right. Rome wasn't built in the day. You just don't magically, you know, it happens sometimes. You catch lightning in a bottle, but yep. it's, yep. change has happened. And this is what people have to understand. Change has happened. This team is way better than it used to be. There's hope on the horizon. There is huge hope on the horizon. This team is very close to being a playoff team. And I, I've said this all along. I think Bobby said it. Well, I think you've even muttered it a few times. Even if they don't make the playoffs this year, to me, it's still a success because they haven't yep. been, they haven't been like this in five years. They've been, 
they've been. Yeah. They've been what the Vancouver Canucks are. Uh, moral victories over playing spoiler. Uh, with, they've been the Chicago Blackhawks, and they're no longer that team. So I think I think people have to keep their expectations uh, in check here. And, and, hey, for me, this team's playing with house money. And add on the fact yeah. you got Mandalazy and Nets. Like, like, come on. Like, really? That, that doesn't happen where goalies come in and back-to-back – like I shame on me for betting on the Sens last night. <laughs> I was like, that's what yeah. you get for that's what you get for hoping a team's gonna win and not using your brain. You you, you, you lose money when you bet. Agree. I, I agree with that. Right? That was one hundred percent. That was agree. me against Vancouver. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wanted to take Vancouver. Yeah. I was like, right. oh. it's, people. So, like, hey, I'd love I'd love to see him win, but it's to me, it's just not realistic right now. Okay, so I need to go okay. back to Bobby's point. Uh, you brought up the D. The D's improved and whatnot. Okay. The last two games, the D has looked like November 25th. It's or November. It just look it's looked horrendous. Got, and I don't mean that as a group of six. I mean that as a team of everybody on the ice. They are running around like it's a, a fire drill. I don't understand. Yorkie, I don't understand. How do you I'm get cheating. back to that point after you've come so far? Because it's the chasing point and I know. Yeah. There go you go. Yeah, that's it. No, you're right. That's, I mean, we were going to say the same thing, so go ahead. But <laughs> that's what they're doing. They're, they, they got down by one, and they said, no, 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 we can't. Um, we can't get down by one. We're not comfortable. We're on the road. We're out west. we got all this stuff going on. They get down by one, and they started chasing both games immediately. Immediately tried to stretch the ice. And that's where, you know, we harp on the D all the time, um, and, and they've, they've gotten better, too. But when your forwards are, are leaving the zone without pucks and not supporting you in five feet ice, those guys have no chance. Then they start rimming the puck and guys start cheating up the ice. That's, I mean, Bjork, you, you can dive deeper on it, but that's that's exactly what I saw. Those forwards just hanging them out to yeah. dry back there. So, I, I, too bad we couldn't do a video session today, but we'd be here all day. You go back to the, you yeah. go back to the Vancouver. So, you guys remember the one goal, the, the one where Holden got absolutely roasted wide? Forward goes wide on him, goes in, basically gets a breakaway from the blue line in. Do you remember that play, Wally, in the Vancouver game? Yep. So I went, I was sitting at home because I had nothing better to do. I was watching the game, having a cocktail, and uh, I, re I, 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 you were on I showed a really night. nice. <laughs> That's right, I was. I was doing the, uh, I was doing the hockey you were night, uh, the YouTube show. A lot of fun with uh, with yeah, uh, with yeah. PJ Stock and, and Andrew Peters. Great dudes. Anyhow, I, I rewatched that one goal. I'm like, man, Holden looked bad. But all to Bobby's point, all three of Ottawa's forwards were blowing the zone, and it's a 50-50 play. Holden doesn't have the puck. He's got he's getting two on one, so he gets beat. But all three Ottawa players are gone. So it's a five. What's happening right now to Ottawa? It's the five guys on the ice. One mistake gets compounded. Everybody's cheating for offense. And they're cheating with good intentions because they think, shit, we're down. We got to get back in this game. We got to get some offense going. We're, we're a team that's one of the top offensive teams in the league. So, hey, we're going to go and we're going to do it. And they're like, ah, oh, crap, two on one goal. Now it's two nothing. And then it just snowballs and it snowballs and it snowballs. And, and, and the power play, too. We can get into that a bit later. Bob's more of the power play guy. But same thing. You get scored on. Shorty, all of a sudden, oh shit! Now we got to try some new things, and and everybody panic yeah. sets in, and and th these are and this is what makes you better in the long run is you learn from things like this. What did that feel like when we had to get it done on the power play when the game was on the line and we didn't? What do we do differently? And they'll go over video and they'll go over things, but you can do all the video you want until you've experienced these real time situations when there's real pressure. You don't know how players are going to react, and some some get better, and some don't, and that's and that's how you evaluate who's going to be part and, and what, what what you might need in the off season and so on. So it's uh, you're right though, Wally. It's a five. It's a five man problem defensively. What's happening? And it's and it's from chasing the game. I don't understand. I don't understand. <laughs> how I can't lay it out any better. <laughs> no, 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 no. Fair, but no, no. Your point is bang on. My point is. I don't understand how three guys are blowing the zone all the time. At what point so, is that on the coaching staff? I don't, I, I don't right. get it. You guys are professional yeah. hockey players. You understand how to play the game. Play the game the right way. I don't understand. I, I'm totally lost in that. 
this is where I'll yeah. I'll say this is just a helpless feeling for DJ and the staff when they're when you're because I guarantee you they're saying the right things and they're telling these guys and they're showing them on video. You cannot win in the NHL when you're down by one, maybe two, and you're cheating for offense. You're blowing the zone. I'm I'm positive that DJ has shown them these clips, but the guys keep doing so it. So why are they doing it? And they're young. Beca okay. be because they're stressed right. and they're young and they're not getting it and, and, and they're forgetting what made them go on a five-game run there. You don't create offense by blowing the zone. You create offense by the attention to detail from your blue line down. That's where you yeah. I mean, that's where your breaks are going to come. And then, you, and then you get to the red line and you, and you allow your skill to take over. And Ottawa's got that in spades on the top six. They're just not, they're just not putting themselves in a position. And DJ must be losing his mind going over this stuff with these guys. Yeah, I mean, I, I would love to be a fly on the wall for that video session today to see some of those goals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's, just popcorn, uh, it, it popcorn also in too, the back row. <laughs> uh, it's, it's so it, it, the game, the game at this time of year, too. It's so mental. And I was watching to yeah. it last night and I was watching his body language. He had so many looks in the last couple games and, and even Kachuk. They had you'd get they'd get a really nice look. Great a scoring chance. They would miss and then. Vancouver came right down and would score like 10 seconds after. To bring it out a wide open net, shot it over the net, came right down and scored. Happened to Brady, same thing. Um, it's just like how, how many times in a power play are you going to see Alex Debrinkit, who's got some of the surest hands in the league, go back for a puck, get it tipped, and they go in and score? Like that's mm. to me. To, to to me, he's not playing like like himself right now. And again, it's he's in a situation where. He's probably thinking about his contract, probably thinking about, hey, I, they brought me in here to score. I, I, I'm usually a 40-goal guy. Now I got 21. Still great, but in his mind, he's probably thinking he should do more, and then you start trying to do more, and then it doesn't work. So it's, uh, hey, yeah. like I said, I'm not, I'm not concerned about this group. They, they will, uh, I, I just don't think, this isn't their time. This is their time to learn this year. If they, if they do happen to catch lightning in a ball and get in, I think it's uh, it's great. I, just, I I said before I didn't see it happening, and now I really don't see it happening. All right, uh, we're gonna pick this show up with some sponsor reads now, since we we need a little bit of levity, and you guys are just bringing the show down. Um, first, of, uh, this show is always <laughs> <laughs> presented by Potato. Go to potato.ca, download. The app. Uh, they are the uh, EGR Gaming Company of the Year for 2022. The game starts now. Use the app and have the amazing world of sports always with you at Botano. Hundreds of betting options for events and same game parlays with Bet Builder. Botano. The game starts now. Online betting and casino. And don't forget live betting. Uh, Yorkie, you're up next. Okay. Well, what do we got I don't, here? I don't Probably even know what's Pro. What do you got for me here, I don't Alex? Know. I'm gonna wait. No, 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 no. Don't Let's take the see. layup. <laughs> Boom. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's Bonisher excavating. Hey, they're hiring right now. Big thanks to our sponsor, Bonisher excavating, helping to shape the Ottawa Valley. They're hiring right now, Wally. Don't forget, get your get your resume in there. Um, get some media uh, experience. Not sure if that's going to help you, but uh, anyhow, you can uh, for laborers, mechanics, concrete structure team quality. Control technicians, Bonisher, excavating. They're your guys. That's a five. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I don't have my glasses on. I can barely read it. I gotta get. I gotta get the glasses back on. I was just struggling to read that. <laughs> early. I got. I got early morning okay. eyes right now. Fair enough. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, oh, I can need some toothpicks to open Alex? these babies up right now. Time change is getting me. <laughs> oh, here we go. As, as always, folks, this show held together very loosely, very loosely this morning by Renfrew Pro, the one with the green core. Renfrew Pro cloth tapes are specifically designed for today's composite sticks. They use high-quality polyester cot material with an advanced adhesive formulation to give your long-lasting play. Available in a variety of colors and patterns. Go to RenfrewPro.com. Also available at all major retailers. Um, feel the game with Renfrew Pro. You can follow them on in Instagram. Excuse me at Renfrew Pro, and don't forget to join them for free tape Fridays. Um, Renfrew Pro, for all your hockey tape needs. <laughs> 11. Boom. That was good. That's Way 11. better than me. 11. Yeah, you knocked that out of the park 11. today. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You must have been practicing Caffeine. on the weekend. That's because hey, you... Ca 
caffeine's kicking in. I'm starting to feel it, boys. <laughs> we had a 7:30 show. My alarm went uh, off at 7:10. Yeah, you got a dip in. You got a, you got a dip in. Well, he does got a dip in. Most, <laughs> you just that was a perfect read with a dip. I love it. Most of yeah, the time. That's why it's 11. <laughs> Uh, okay, we're it. going back to I. I don't know if you noticed uh, who, who played the fewest minutes for the Ottawa Senators defense in yesterday's game. It had to be Shabbat. He left hurt, right? Yes. Now, is there a concern with Thomas Shabbat being out of the lineup? At, so he played fifteen fifty nine, which was the fewest minutes of any on D. Yeah. Is there a concern yeah, with him? Be absolutely. If he's out of the lineup. They're not they're they're not as good as a team as as much as it probably pains people to hear this because people are all over him right now. The Senators yes. D is not as good if Thomas Shabbat is not in the lineup. Period. Not the only guy making mistakes back there. Um, I'm not going to defend yeah. this play. I don't think he's played well lately. I think uh, he's not playing like the way he can. Um, him like most of the team right now. Um, just trying to do too much, making some bad decisions, especially defensively. Uh, has to be more of a shooting threat on the power play. He's, 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 to me, he's distributing too much. And the one thing I will say about the power play, you're going to have your ebbs and flows. You're going to have your ups and downs. I was really surprised they took to break it off that first unit. I just, man, he just really cal calms things down. I know they had the shorty they gave up, but I just... To, get, to change things like that right away, I know you're the coaching staff trying to look for answers, trying to do things, but I, I don't know if I would have taken to bring it off that first unit. I just, to me, that was a little bit puzzling. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. And I I guess we can touch on the power play a little bit, but I was going to say the same thing about Chavi. I don't think sure. he's been great. I think he would probably be the first to admit it, but if he goes down, my, my goodness, the, the, the yeah. amount of stress you're putting on Sanderson as a rookie Chikrin played 25 minutes last night in a five to one loss. That's, I mean, that's, that's the kind of game where it's four to one and you want to start to move those guys towards the bench. Not, not out of any other reason than um, yeah. longevity for them for the stretch run here that, that, you know, you're going to try to get yourself back in, but now, I mean, you're going to put 24 minutes on him, 20 minutes on Sanderson, and you got to elevate other guys throughout the lineup. And, and I mean, you're not eating 10 minutes. You're eating, you're eating 24 minutes most nights from shabby, right? You got to find a way to, to put those on other guys and they just don't have, thank God they have Chikrin and, and the, you know, and the ability to do that, but that just puts way too much stress on those guys. So you can say what you want about Chabby and the way that he's played lately, but he just eats minutes and he gives you good minutes most of the time. Um, and, and I, I was, you know what, the one thing I was going to say is he's got it. He's got to waste a few shots from the point on the power play just to keep other teams honest, because right now it looks stagnant. You know, he moves to the middle of the ice. Well, but when you don't have the threat to shoot and they know that that puck's just going to go right back to the half wall, um, yeah. it, it really it really closes down a lot of options. So he's got to waste a few towards the net for me. I would really like to see that um, just to keep guys honest and in the middle of the ice so the lanes open up and the rest of the, the rest of the plays open up. But um, the, uh, but yeah, well, I, you know, the topic of conversation is if he's down, that team changes dramatically on that back end. He just I watched I was I was watching him pretty closely. On, on some of those goals and he's doing he's doing what the forwards are doing is cheating and and the way that d cheat is when the pucks moved up the ice the offside d joins the rush and he got burned last night and i'm trying to remember it was pinto pinto had the puck right at the blue line and he didn't get it d yeah. shabbat was on the far side of the screen and it already joined the rush and I was watching, I'm like, why are you joining the rush right now? You're, you're so far, like he was way over on the far side of the ice. So Pinto was on the one side of the blue line and Shabbat had, was on the other side of the blue line. So you've left the whole middle of the ice open. So if there is a turnover, you're done. And sure enough, the puck got turned over. The mistake was Pinto's. He, he turned it over, didn't get it deep. Right away, Calgary's coming the other way and Shabbat is out of position. So it's gambling. And again, you're gambling because you're chasing the game and you're down. So, and then it turns into more. Then all of a sudden, whatever it was, 3 1 becomes 4 1 or whatever the score was. But to me, it's just making better decisions. The defense are, they have to pick better times on when they're going to gamble. Chikrin did it too. He jumped up a little bit unlucky right at the offensive blue line. Puck got poked by him. Another two on one. The amount of two on ones this defense has given up in the last two games is 
you can't win in the NHL that way. But but Bobby made the point earlier. The reason they're doing it is because they're chasing the game, and they're chasing it, and then they're just it's the snowball's turning into like a massive boulder, and they're getting crushed. Yeah. So okay, I, uh, coming back to that point, I just want to point out the power play since February 11th, which was the All Star break. Uh, and if you didn't see the broadcast last night, I'm just I'm, I'm repeating some of the stuff they showed. But since February 11th, the power play is 11.9 percent. They've got seven power play goals scored, seven shorthanded goals against. The PK, by the way, has done its job, 89.4 percent, and they've allowed seven power play goals. So the power play is is killing them, but it's still ranked sixth in the league. The penalty kill is fifth in the league. If you have two in the top ten, you should be a playoff team. Um, that's always one of the things people always talk about is if your special teams are really good, then chances are night in, night out, you're winning. And they're not, I mean, the power play is now over for the last eight games, I think it is, and which is obvious of why this team seems to be struggling at the moment, right? They're getting nothing out of their power play. They're not even any momentum. Well, that's the, th that's, and that's the killer, right? At, at the very least, a, a power play's job is to create momentum, right? That's, that's, and you, and, more to that point at the very least of the last thing you can do is kill momentum getting scored on shorthanded yeah. absolutely creates a, a a hole in the game you give up a shorthanded goal not only the guys on the ice are mad but the guys on the bench and the penalty and the guys that aren't on the power play that want to be are going well i can do that <laughs> like so your whole bench and your whole <laughs> your whole unit just i mean they're just the most deflating goals you can give up right they really are and you're giving them up in times when you're actually still in the game. That that's what makes it really, really hard as a team to come back from. So they, to be, they've gotten away. Their, their entries have still been okay. I think. Um, I wouldn't say that. You know, if you give the puck to Stutzla, you almost have an automatic entry for the most part. But at the same time, you're not creating thing. I, I'm going back to the game against Brady. Brady's walked out from the goal line a couple of times and created some stuff. Um, but there's just not enough guys getting downhill. Uh, to join him at the net there, so you were never gonna you were never gonna run at the clip that they were running at for the rest of the year on that power play. Sure. Um, it, I I just don't think that's realistic. But at the same time, you can't give momentum away. And offensive guys are the same guys we're talking about in the cheating area. They're cheating every part of the game right now, and that's and it's costing them. And you're giving up you're giving up shorthanded breakaways. Um, and you got like it, they could have given up more it could have been worse from the shorthand of goals <laughs> <I know. laughs> so um just extremely deflating they got to get back to the basics and they got to get in the zone set up and then they got to waste a few shots at the net and then let things open up naturally yeah and i think that's i think that's why the coaching staff put check right out there like hey, we got to get a shooting threat out there we need a guy that's just going to throw some bombs so i get why they tried to do that Sw switch it up a little bit but it, it, the question you asked earlier, Wally, with 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 the power play and how are they not winning when their special teams are this good? Because usually, but on the reverse side of things, how bad is this team? Where do they rank in the league on five on five scoring? They're right near the bottom, right? One of the one of the yeah, worst yeah. teams in the yeah. NHL. At so this time of year, things clamp down. You're still getting your power plays, but teams get better. Teams get better at killing. Uh, they're bearing down more. They're blocking more shots. They're more desperate. Um, teams that are at, are out of the playoffs are playing looser, so it's it's tougher to score on special teams this time of year for the most part. So you got to be like that's been the Achilles' heel of the Ottawa Senators all all year is they haven't been able to generate enough offense five on five. So the power play has been carrying them for most of the year, and now. Here it is. We need some five on five, and and they're still not good enough in that aspect of the game. So to me, that's killing them. Yeah, the, the power play wasn't sustainable. Uh, doing what they were doing. Now you gotta fall back to five on five, and it just it hasn't been there all year, and it's still uh, it's still not good enough. Twenty seventh overall. Yeah, yeah. You're not. They you're are not, you're not minus. Getting... Twenty-one in five-on-five five goal differential, or even strength. So goal if you yeah, you're minus twenty-one at at five-on-five, five, you're not getting the playoffs. Minus twenty-five at, or twenty-one, whatever it is, at five-on-five. Five, come on, like again, no. No. be realistic expectations. You got to be a better five-on-five five team. Yeah, could not agree more. Yeah, on I'm that. just quickly yeah. looking. Not, no, not... no team below them. Yeah, uh, are in the playoffs. Yeah, that yeah. that that's you're, you're not making a run that, like that. I'm a, big, I'm a big, I'm a big, I'm a big, I'm a big differential guy. Every year when you look at the playoffs and you see who's in and who's out, 
it's usually always goal differential. All the teams that are out are in the minus category by quite a bit. And then you, as you go down, it's, it's so it's, that stat is very indicative to where your team fits in the standings. And uh, hey, they, it's the one thing they got to me. It's the one thing the Ottawa Senators need to improve at the most is their five on five play. Yeah. Agreed and Minnesota is interesting yeah. to me. They, they are uh, at zero. So they're even at, and they're second in their division, which is odd, yeah. right? That's just one of those tall or weird anomalies, if you will. Pretty, that division, yeah. that division That's an outlier. doesn't really have a clear. They don't really have a clear cut favorite. That I, like you look around, they're like, ah, who's the best team over there? It's like it's Minnesota, Dallas, but they Dallas. It's like nobody's really saying, ah, I like that team. It's weird that division. Yeah, yeah. Whoever, yeah, whoever yeah. comes out of there is just. I mean, it. Yeah. Very much so. It's a, it, it is a weird, it's kind of a funky division because you look at the West and you, you just think Pacific, right? With, with those guys. So. Yes. Yeah. Dallas, to me, I, I haven't paid um, much quick, attention to them, but they can score. Oh yeah. Yeah. Jason Robertson. Yeah. Is, he, Jason he doesn't get enough He's attention a, for me. No, he kind of flies under the radar out there. But um, and then I mean Pavelski at thirty eight still doing it. They're they're a good team. I just don't think they're a team that's going to win and go deep into the playoffs. I just I don't see that. But who knows? Yeah. I mean, they what don't, do you think Pavelski, of Jake? Ottinger? They get a win. Like, I think they've got goaltending. Yeah. They've got goaltending. Yeah. I just he's from. I don't know. I don't know if they're deep enough. Um, I'd actually like to spend more time watching them. I got they're they're a team that intrigues me, but. Every year they're a team that gets in and and you know they catch a big heavy team that yeah. they're playing against and they seem to they seem to kind of go away. They're kind of like San Jose, right? Always had all these great regular right. season teams and then just petered out, I guess, in the postseason. They're plus fifty one in the goal differential. Like they've had a really good season, but I know what you mean. There's just nothing there that yeah. really excites you about Dallas. I mean, who are they going to get first? Are they going to end up with? I mean, they I'm looking right. They now. might end up with a Winnipeg, Edmonton, or a Colorado. In the first round. Oh, imagine go that. Hey, great season. Yeah. You're yeah. playing McDavid yeah. in the first round. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Thanks go, for coming. Go ahead and win win your division, blow everybody out of the water, but then you get Colorado who limped in with injuries and won the cup last year. Have fun. <laughs> <laughs> Have fun with that one. <laughs> yeah. Good season. You got two okay. weeks left. <laughs> do, the, do the Edmonton Oilers – we should probably bring this up tomorrow. Do the Edmonton Oilers scare you, though? Oh yeah, but David does. Yeah, yeah. Drysital, but Ekholm was I mean, a great. But they've pickup. had great seasons before, and yeah. they haven't done it in the postseason. Ekholm's different, right? He's an addition, sure. Yeah, but you just know that they're going to hang three every night, no matter what. So you know that you have to go out and find a way to score three to four goals to win every single game, right? And I mean, yeah. you don't want to go into the playoffs if you're a Dallas, which is somewhat of a run and gun team, from what you know, what I've noticed. And play another run and gun team. You just don't want to do that because um, I don't think they have the horses to compete with an Edmonton. But they, I mean, but the, the yeah. stats would show that they're better. But I'm, I'm not getting into a horse race with with McDavid and Drysaitel on the other side at all. <laughs> no, thank you. No, sir, not a chance. No, not no. a. You gotta, chance. you gotta, uh, you gotta really hope something happens here and Nashville finds a way in. <laughs> That's what you're hoping for. At this point. Uh, back to you. Uh, <laughs> Come on, Preds, go on a run, Preds. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Back to Ottawa quickly. Matthew Joseph left the game. As you guys can tell, when you get up and, I guess, slam the glass or look like you're in a lot of discomfort early on, you know it's probably not very good. No. No, it's not. Hey, are, are we're not going to talk more Dallas Stars. That's exactly what Sens fans want to hear. No. <laughs> After they get pummeled two in a row. No, listen, our, <laughs> our playoff preview, we'll get to that when we get to it. All right. Uh, right guys, Joseph. We'll talk playoffs later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it didn't look good the way the way Joseph went in and his um, his uh, whatever he did after he banged the glass. You knew you knew it was serious. So yeah. hopefully it's not a it's not a, a major knee injury or something like that. But it, no. I, I don't want to speculate. All he could tell is it looked bad because he knew right away just, something was wrong. I was gonna say just it just sucks, right? Yeah, I mean. Yeah, I don't want to do that either, speculate. But at the same time, as soon as you see a guy with that kind of pain and that kind of reaction, he, yeah, you know, he knew. He knew something was there. And you hope that it's – hope that it felt worse in the moment than it is when he calms down and the swelling goes down and he gets some answers for whatever it was. Um, but, yeah, that, that kind of reaction right down the tunnel, um, 
you almost know that he's he's missing some time is my guess that's, that's by that reaction yeah uh yeah. good thing they brought in patrick brown um i'll quickly bring this up of i don't know how well you guys have watched julian goche's game um yeah, and there's a lot of talk about him when he came over of no one can really figure out what his game is he's got good size he's got speed um but you can see there's something there but you can also see that he just can't figure out i guess how to put it all together and maybe i'm wrong uh yorkie what do you think of his game well, I watched pretty closely last night, and I think uh, TSN did a pack on him, all the breakaways he's had. What's he had, like four yeah. or five breakaways and hasn't been able to cash in? So he's getting he's getting looks. He's getting opportunities. He's a big guy. I will say this. When you're playing the amount of minutes he's playing, it's really tough. It's It's really tough to be a difference maker in the game because – all those power plays, you're not getting on the power play, you're not on the penalty kill, so you're on the third or the fourth line, and you're a guy that's supposed to maybe provide some offense. You got to be really fortunate. I'm not going to say lucky. You got to be really fortunate to cash in on your chances because you're only going to get so many opportunities. And he's got them, but he hasn't scored. So I think there's something there. But he, like anybody, you ask any yeah. player, it's really tough to play limited minutes and be a difference maker in the game. So the guys that can do it, they forge a career out of it in the NHL, and they become energy guys. To me, he's not an energy guy. I watch him play. Yeah. He's not an energy guy. He's a guy that probably, if he's going to play his best, he's parked out in the slot on your second power play. He's um, he's like your your seventh forward, a guy that you, you're going to use for some offense, but I just I don't see him as an effective fourth liner. I just... I, and, and maybe he's a tweener, yeah. and that's the thing. There's there's a ton of tweeners floating around in the hockey universe that scored and are great players, but for some reason, when they got their opportunities, they just didn't cash in. So I think there's something there, but I just look at the way Ottawa's made up. They've got so many guys that can score. He's going to have to figure out that he's got to bring, like when he, he's got to run around. He's got to finish every single hit. He's got to... Yeah play that way and then hopefully somebody gets hurt down the road for him and he gets an opportunity to get on the power play yeah yeah I don't see him as a, yeah I was How just much? gonna say that uh, under under nine's hard man 844 never, yeah he, he, he not never catch a flow this. no and no. you hey, know Bobby, what Bobby I, think about this Bobby hold on think about this and if you've ever played a game where you've played under 10 minutes your heart rate goes up to 170 you go sit on the bench, you go down this to 80, and you and then you get on the ice and you always feel exhausted. Like it's it's yeah. so, yeah. so tough to play. Jello legs, right? Your leg your legs never get into it. You never find a rhythm. Your low back stiffens up because you're just grocery sticking for periods of time uh, between the forwards and the D. You're like, you just you, you cannot you yeah, you know, you're bookending, right? <laughs> but you can't get into a rhythm. Um yeah. I actually like his game. I would agree that a seventh forward was exactly where I would have him um pegged if he's going to be successful in the nhl and you know what i i saw the one the other night where he he had to catch up to the puck a little bit and then he tried to go backhand five hole not sure like go right-handed guys cannot you cannot score five hole um a lot on the backhanded side so he's got that long reach i would just love to see him get real comfortable at coming in and shooting low glove right keep a goalie frozen um, with the ability to know that you can go to your backhand to try to beat him because of that long reach. But I'd really like to see him get comfortable with that shot because I think he could score on that shot with, with, with the, you know, the reach. He's got the ability to move that puck from side to side. Um, so, but that, that, that comes with time and experience um, developing that. But I, 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 do, that, like, I do like – I'm a fan of his game. I like the way he plays. I just don't know if he's going to ever be in a situation in Ottawa – that elevates him to where he's going to be. He's behind guys that are draft picks, are core players. Um, so, you know, he, yes, he, you, he kind of right. looks he's like Zach get, Sanford. Got to get lucky. <laughs> Zach okay. Sanford. I did, yeah, yeah. Good, yeah. yeah good he's just got a right, big guy. Yeah, he just yeah. he's it's, just soft and and he's not playing like no one really knows what he is. Yeah, it's, and I, I'm sure he's trying yeah. to figure it out himself, right? Where do I fit in here, and what's going to make me successful to stay here? And um, he's going to have to, like, he's going to have to run around, and he's going to have to have some puck luck. That's just the way it goes when you're a guy that's in that bubble spot. It's a hard spot to be. It's a really hard spot to be in if you're that player too. 
Oh, it's tough. So tough. Um, so tough. Bobby Ryan played 19 games, less than 10 minutes uh, in the games. And I don't know which ones are injuries or not, uh, but I can tell you, you had a total of one assist in 19 games. <laughs> under that many minutes? Ha- under how many minutes? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Under yeah. 10 minutes a night. Oh, actually, I should say that... <laughs> I left a lot of games with hands, so. <laughs> well, that's that's why I'm like they may all be yeah. hand injuries. I'm not sure. There's this is, probably this quite, is the, I, would, uh, I would let's just say half. Let's just say half are hand injuries, and the other half are like, yeah, I need a hot tub. So, <laughs> you know what? Yeah. It's it's anything below five, it's, which is one, two. There's four games below five. No five. I would assume those are all hand injuries. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah those it, are the it, games you leave it, after it, a couple it, of periods. It is a real skill. It is a real skill to be able to play under 10 minutes a night and be effective because it is. anyone that's ever sat, I, anyone yep. that's, so think about this, Bob and Wally, anybody, we've all, obviously Bobby and I, Wally, you've been ice level um, as well, Wally. The game is so friggin' fast. So mm. why do guys play better when they're playing all the time? Cause you're into it. You're in rhythm. You're, you're not, you're not stopping and sitting on the bench because when you do, man, it is, that's why I have so much respect for guys that um, even the fighters that were playing like Austin three Watson. minutes a game. Like, yeah, and he's effective when he goes out there. Why? Because it yeah. takes a while to perfect that art and and sit there and get the legs going. You see the guys on the bench too. You can see when the coach calls their number, they get up and they start dancing around on the bench, shaking their legs because the legs are yep. they're asleep. So it's uh, yep. a lot of respect for those guys. Trying to see, like Brad May was a guy to me. Yep. Uh, kind of yep. in that same position, right? Like he a could day. generate offense and, and still play ten minutes a night. But that shows you my age. But I used to at the end of games because we'd always be up in the press box, obviously on on non broadcast games, is go down to the Zamboni Tunnel for about the last five to seven minutes mm-hmm. and just watch because of how quick the game is. And I always said that to people, the seats around the glass are terrible because you can't see the whole rink, but they tell you how quick that game is and the decisions that you guys have to make at split mm-hmm. seconds or you get your head taken off pretty quick. Yep. Yeah. That's what you get to appreciate. Yep. Agreed. Uh, Yorkie, um, what isn't appreciated is how you say the word, um, well, catch up. And uh, do you, and I guess the question is, what do you put on your hot dog in the summer when you're eating it? Listen, when I grew up, it was plain hamburger, plain hot dog. What happened oh. was my older brother, my older brother told me ketchup was blood. And I believed him up until I was 10. So I just never, never got in that ha- <laughs> habit of eating ketchup. <laughs> so <laughs> still don't eat it. I it's don't ketchup. It necessary. It's ketchup. If, if the... Uh, <laughs> you, if your food's that bad, you shouldn't be eating it. You need to stick some tomato sauce on it. Cook your food the right exactly. way. Get so, some seasoning in your burger. Hey, if hot well, dog, I'm uh, mustard. I'm mustard, and that's it. Maybe okay. some onions. Maybe a chili dog. But no relish. Yorkie. I feel like no we're ketchup. doing like the uh, the Family Guy Cool Whip thing right now. Um, <laughs> cool. So I'm gonna say <laughs> Cool Whip. Um, play cool. so. <laughs> the sends are playing catch up <laughs> and on your hot dog you put ketchup <laughs> okay <laughs> i'm doing it on purpose now just to drive wally nuts <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's not me it's our view it's our fan base who are incensed at how bad you butcher the word ketchup <laughs> it's a it's the wallet steak conundrum all over again <laughs> that cool whip that cool whip episode's believe... the best on family guy <laughs> oh it's incredible <laughs> cool whip <laughs> so but to answer the question uh, i have mustard and, and yeah. if i'm feeling a little dangerous i go with a little yeah. dijon mustard if just i just feel a little dangerous i'll mix it up but no no ketchup I'm not taking um, part in that bobby what are your condiments on a hot dog I'm not a big dog guy, um, but I, I'm strictly ketchup. Just, just pretty plain catch ketchup on a dog, ketchup on a burger. Um, I don't go into the onions or the nothing. I, very plain. Yeah. 
Okay. Strictly is ketchup. There, yeah. Since you have this huge anti-Putin thing, do you put ketchup on your fries? Uh, not, I mean, on the side, yeah. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a dipper of yeah. the fries um, in ketchup. Yeah. And I don't do vinegar either. I know uh, Yorkie said vinegar the other day. Nope, Love just it. plain. No. Salt, That's awful. pepper, ketchup. That's it. Yeah, I don't get it. Don't put vinegar We're a big on ketchup the fries. Household. Like you said, soggy. Vinegar yeah, soggy. Yeah. I want my crispy yeah. fries. My wife does it. I love I hate love it. Love my salt and vinegar. Salt and vinegar is fantastic. Salt and vinegar chips, Ugh. same thing. Ugh. No. But no Yorkie. ketchup chips. Just no ketchup chips. Oh Never. Never. No, is that Never. for Zaitsov? Does Zaitsov use ketchup chips? Zaitsov. <laughs> We used to. Uh, <laughs> I'll say, I'll say my words as I want to say them. So we don't have. I, I actually, I, I think that we might have them in the states now. We we definitely didn't. But when I played in Anaheim, we used to go to Vancouver, and the equipment manager for Vancouver used to go out and buy bags and bags of it for Getzlaff and the boys um, to take home. I mean, there you'd walk in, and there, you know how after the game you got your pizza station, so the guys can grab a quick slice while they're getting changed, just to hold you over till the plane. There was yep. 15 bags of ketchup chips in, in the Anaheim locker room all the time for guys to take home. Every single time. Never failed. What and about I, all I dressed? couldn't do them. I, um, yeah. They weren't as big. I've never tried them. Uh, I'm not a chip person either. Really? Uh, at all. But oh. no, n never have been. Never have been. If I, if, and if I am, it's just a regular old school nacho cheese Dorito. That's it. Like the red bag. Really? But, but yeah. yeah so but ketchup chips, man. And I think I've time. asked you this. I think I asked you months ago. Um, so what is then your snack if you're sitting around watching a movie? Um, I'm, I'm a popcorn guy. I'll, I'll throw popcorn. Uh, okay. I And I actually haven't set it up, but I got the home theater popcorn machine now. So I'm pumped about that. But um, real big on wheat thins. Um, which Ooh. are terrible in Canada. They're way better in the U.S., but we put, we They're probably could, we put way more preserve we put way more preservatives in them. <laughs> um, but wheat thins, cheese its um, kind of the salty snack, but not not a chip style guy okay. at all. Okay, I had, a, I had a bad weekend. I feel shame today. I think Saturday night I crushed. I like my Miss Vicky's. Had the Miss Vicky's salt and vinegars. Then went back to back Sunday. I went back to the Miss Vicky's. <laughs> Had the uh, oh no the blue bag there. I had the blue bag. I'm not even sure what flavor that is. The blue bag Miss Vicky's are unbelievable. But if I'm gonna pick I, uh, a snack, if I'm gonna pick a snack, I'm an ice cream guy. Carp, you ever have yeah, carp yes. creamery, Wally? Carp creamery yep. ice cream. Yep. The homemade stuff. Yes, but the, the lineup's the always too long. You got to get it at the cat. They sell it right there. I, I oh, can't. Well I, I go there and I mention Bobby's name and then they won't let me in. Um, is uh. <laughs> <laughs> is uh that's, i, I that's don't know fair. if you noticed but <laughs> lisa and my daughter have been away for the last four days so ryan and i have been bacheloring it for a week so when it comes to cheat days i'm well past where i should be at so i had the birthday weekend i'm tough. with you a lot of big <laughs> meals here going on yeah, you, yeah it's like a birthday week for you you've got you it is yeah. this up to be like yeah well, it, it, and it extends in the next week too, so I won't be here Monday probably. But at the same time, um, <laughs> we had yeah, I had a buddy in town. He's well, he's still here. Um, he's a huge Leafs fan, so we've been going back and forth on that a little bit because he's from Toronto. But um, we had a nice dinner out. He was a chef, so he did a big scallops and steak last night and nice. uh, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then my my go to cheat is the P. F. Chang's chocolate cake. So. <laughs> uh Lynn's went out Lynn's went out got a big one and I'm talking I mean the slices are 900 calories a pop and we've been having a slice every night so it's, it hasn't been a good weekend for the boys <laughs> we need to sweat sweat out the sugar here today <laughs> just make sure you remind your buddy that Tim Stutzla is better than Austin Watson uh or Austin Matthews sorry because that'll that'll send him over the edge probably that, yeah, that, yeah. I don't feel like fighting on a Monday. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, maybe Tuesday. Uh, that's it yeah, for fair. today, boys. We'll see you tomorrow. We'll talk about the Oilers and uh, we'll discuss some more uh, Ottawa Senators inside information. Uh, enjoy your birthday week, Bobby. Uh, catch you tomorrow, boys. Yeah. Thanks, boys. boys. Have a good one.
Coming in hot is brought to you by Botano.ca. Please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel to never miss an episode.